Uh, welcome back to Happy Hour with Heather and Guest. This is episode number 49. Um, I'm joined, as always, by Heather, who lends her name to the show. Good to have you here. Thank you. And uh, today we're going to talk about bands. This was Heather's uh, selection. So we're going to talk about a band uh, called Merlin, uh, who is from Kansas City, Missouri. And then next up after that, we're going to talk about uh, Blunt from DeKalb, Illinois, and Crow Ballard, who I believe is from Oregon or the Pacific Northwest, or one of those things. Um, but uh, we're going to kick things off. The first album from Merlin that we're going to talk about is called The Wizard. And uh, the first track is going to be called Grave Lord. Yes. Yes. And I wanted to um, mention about Merlin. Um, they are the masters of the meme. They, their Instagram page and their Facebook page, they post the funniest stuff. Um, I really like how they have this great sense of humor. They don't take themselves too seriously. And they got in this epic meme war <laughs> with the band Wizard. <laughs> and, I mean, it was so funny, the stuff that they posted. And I would definitely, definitely recommend checking out their page and checking out <laughs> this stuff that they post. And they got in this meme war with Wizard. And it was like, it all led up to... They did the, a split together and it's on Ripple Music and it's incredible. And so we're not going to talk about that one today, but I really recommend checking that out because it's phenomenal. But um, the Wizard, this album, they released it in 2018 and Grave Lord, I like how the guitar came in when the guitar, there was a part of the guitar that came in and it really reminded me of Eddie Van Halen. I, I, I think I picked the perfect band to talk about right before Halloween. When I was listening to this, I was wondering why there's not more doom music, you know, and horror movies. Cause it seems like it's the perfect fit. I mean, Praise be the tomb so bloody and cold. They rise from the ground, the bones of old. They writhe in the streets of cobbled stone. Pale horrors march from grave unknown. Those are like the perfect lyrics. <laughs> Horror. <laughs> Doom. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to mention it earlier than I usually do, but go check out the playlist that Heather has put together. It's got all the songs we're going to be discussing. So listen to them first. So you'll have an idea of the nuances that we are bringing and the, uh, the incredible insight that we're going to offer uh, as we break these songs down. Um, for Grave Lord, I wrote, it was a great opening riff with a nice buildup and a progressive feel to it combined with, uh, what I'm going to refer to as jugga juggas. So, you know, the sound you get when you hear a guitar going jugga 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 jugga. So, again, I don't know the technical term. That might be the technical term. But, uh, and then there's a segment in the song where my mother, if she was listening to it, would say it sounds like Metroid, um, which to her, is, she's meaning that uh, as something negative. She doesn't like Metroid. You know, she's a fan of Billy Joel. All metal music sounds like Metroid to her. Um, I enjoy it, on the other hand. Um, the song has sort of a new wave of British heavy metal feel to it with uh, clean vocals, doom subjects, as Heather uh, so eloquently spoke about in the lyrics, and a great way to kick things off for Halloween, as you said. Yeah. So next up uh, was Golem. Yeah, the low tone of the guitars, the, it sounds really sinister. The song sounds like it should be played on a pipe organ in a huge mansion, like in Dracula. I really like how they're not afraid to mix things up and create various soundscapes and atmospheres. It's really fun because you really don't know what they're going to do next. Yeah, this was... Uh... To use the term progressive doom, 
This was like another progressive doom song with a bluesy feel to it. Uh, they do a great job combining different elements really well to create a unique sound. Um, and of course, the image I had in my head was a, of a golem, which is a creature that's either summoned or constructed out of clay or stone or what have you uh, to, for protection. Um, and then uh, they're not easy to control. So usually in these stories, um, whomever has created the golem loses control of it and then it's on the warpath and just destroying things so um there are a couple of famous examples i think uh of golems that have been created you can look them up um and then yeah there's a progressive breakdown with time changes and whatnot uh again i'm getting more technical here with uh with golem but uh, so far a great one-two punch from merlin um and next up uh tarantula hawk yeah the drums i just like the first thing i thought was like oh man the drums i just i just pictured the headless horseman galloping the the pounding drums in sync together with the vocals is just so phenomenal there's also some progressive guitar work a lot of different elements coming together and them staying in tempo with each other you know which i thought was really impressive Yeah, so for me, for Tarantula Hawk, uh, the first thing I thought of, well, two things I thought of. Um, there is a, uh, a nature, I guess, I don't know, I guess he's a, a conservationist, biologist, whatever. His name is Coyote Peterson, and he has YouTube clips where he um, will allow uh, insects to either bite or sting him to register what the pain index is. Um, and I think a tarantula hawk is one of them that he uses, which is like a wasp. I think um, I think it's less painful than a bullet ant, which uh, feel like if it bites you, it feels like you've been shot by a bullet. Um, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, so tarantula hawk, I first heard about that in the film Wild Wild West with Will Smith. Uh, it is a, a wasp that will prey on tarantulas. I think that's how it's got its name. There's a great uh, story you should you can find on YouTube that Kevin Smith tells about uh, about when he was hired to write the Superman movie with Nick Cage, that he was instructed to have a giant spider in the third act. Um, and then later on, that producer would end up producing Wild Wild West, in which there's a giant mechanical spider in the third act. Anyway. Um, so that's what I was thinking of a lot in the old duders, a lot of strands in the old duders head going into this jam. As for the song, again, we got more jugga juggas uh, and it's progressive. The, this one has more of a stoner feel to it. So uh, switching from doom to stoner, but effortlessly switching. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up the wizard. Next up is the mortal. And the first, the first track is called Chaos Blade. Yeah, and The Mortal, they released in 2019. And this album, to me, seems to be another step forward in their sound. It, see, it sounds, the sound, it sounded even more complex with more instrumentation. The vocals in this song are more soaring. It's almost like an orchestra or maybe uh, like a rock opera. There's a lot going on, but there's order to it. Nothing is overpowering. It gets progressive at the end, and I'm just amazed at what they can do. I'm, it, it really seems effortless to me. Yeah, this was... So I, I'm pretty sure... I know it was a horn. I'm pretty sure it was a saxophone that I heard in this song. So I, the first thing I thought was saxophone with doom. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, and then it reminded me of the band morphine who, uh, was more of like a, a, I don't even know how to classify them like rock and roll with also a, like a horn. Um, so this remind chaos blade was sort of like metal morphine, if you will. Uh, which I really enjoyed much more than I thought. Like if on paper, if you were to say, 
we're going to have doom and a horn, I'd be like, eh, those things really don't go together, but they made it work really well. Um, and then next up was mind flare. Yeah. And I just think these, these guys, they deserve more credit and I don't even care how much praise they've gotten because in my opinion, they need more. The the way they put these songs together and the instruments they use in each song, it sounds like a different composition. Um, check out the album art too. And uh, for the last one, it's really cool. It's like, you know, um, like holding a skull, you know, and then for this one, the the album art is just really awesome and they say they mention who the artist is on their Bandcamp page and i'm not even going to attempt to try to pronounce his name because i know i'm going to get it wrong but um definitely check it out because the album art on this is is really spectacular yeah i would agree with you check out the uh, album art they have a bunch of albums on Bandcamp um, yeah we only picked three of them but they have uh, many more. Um, and uh, yeah, Mind Flayer, I said it was stoner jamming with bass. Uh, not that I couldn't hear the bass before, but this one, it was more prominent uh, with a bluesy feel. And I wrote, great chorus. I'm captivated by the chorus. So I was captivated. I was It was hypnotizing. Um, and then there was some more progressive time stop starts. It was almost psychedelic. I felt like it was on the cusp of being psychedelic, but it didn't quite get there. And then I wrote, it becomes doom, but like I've gone into Wonderland, like with Alice in Wonderland. It was just like a crazy, distorted thing where I feel I felt like I had taken hallucinogens or nothing made sense. Um, but it was it was enjoyable. So... Uh, and then the last track off the album is called Basilisk. Yeah, and the the saxophone and the soaring vocals they they go so well together. There's a great bass line and more horns. Uh, my ears, I tried to pick out the different instruments that they used in the song. Um, you know, the drums, the guitars, uh, but I couldn't. I know I I couldn't pick everything out. Um, <laughs> It's just amazing that that's what makes Merlin so unique, the creative journey that they take you on. And there's just nothing else like it that I've heard. Yeah, this this one, I I don't know if I've invented this term, but I certainly enjoyed using it. Psychedelic funk metal. That's what I would have attributed to this track. It was sort of as if like the Red Hot Chili Peppers decided to play heavy metal. Um this one was sort of like the Mad Hatter and the Cheshire Cat took control of my journey and were just like, yeah, we've there are no rules anymore. Just enjoy uh enjoy these progressive time shifts into a jazzier number. Um and I was like, yeah, well, you're kind of going against everything that I've learned about this genre, but you're making it work. So it was really well done. Um and then last up, we have Electric Children, Final Cut. And the first track is Electric Children. Yeah, and they they released this album in 2021. And the original Electric Children was released in 2016. And this is a reimagined version of that album. This song is my favorite. I'm pretty sure this is when I started listening to them. You just cannot go wrong with <laughs> with lyrics like electric children rise, peel off your disguise, show them all your will, so many people to kill. I, I don't think you can get more doom than that. <laughs> I, I just think this song is a masterpiece. Yeah, anytime you have the word electric uh, in the title and it's doom, it's it's bound to be good. Um, yeah, this one I said, uh, it's interesting you used the word peeled or from the, or you were talking about the lyrics. This felt like peeled back stoner. I don't know what that actually means, but that's what it felt like with some horns and wah-wah. 
and time changes. So I guess that makes it progressive too. But uh, they're really great at combining elements into a song that I wouldn't have anticipated working as well as they do. So they are definitely a unique sounding band in the Doom, if you're going to classify them as Doom. Um, definitely worth checking them out. Uh, next up was Willow the Wisp. Yeah, I really like songs that, that have starts and stops. And to me, it adds another interesting element to the song. And it also shows how well the, the musicians work together. It's really cool how the synths and the, the guitar go so well together. I scoped out their Bandcamp page and I looked <laughs> I looked at the merch items and every every single thing on their Bandcamp page is sold out. So to me, what's that tell you to me? <laughs> but <laughs> to me that that definitely in demand. Their stuff is definitely in demand. So yeah, I I can't recommend checking out their music high enough. Yeah, I would echo those sentiments. Um, also, for me, uh, this one comes out of the gates, Doomy, uh, and it got a side head nod going with aplomb. Uh, I just wanted to use the word aplomb. Um, and Willow the Wisp, it was the nickname of a boxer named Willie Pep, uh, who some consider the greatest featherweight of all time. So that's what I was thinking of. Um, he once reportedly won a round without throwing a punch, just just being suave and sort of commanding the ring. So that was the image in my head as the song was playing, was just Willie Pep dominating somebody in the ring. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, really, and they keep, they keep sort of pushing it a little bit more, but it never quite go, it never quite, it never quite goes over the line it's like right within the realm of something I'm really digging. Uh, and then last up tales of the wasteland. Yeah. This song is a, a real journey. It's 23 minutes long and you have to listen to the whole thing. It's the law, but seriously, listen to the whole thing. I, I, I don't want to describe the song. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't even want to say anything about it because I want you to listen to it and be surprised. <laughs> um, its song is like, checkmate, boom, done, peace out. Yeah, so uh, if any of Merlin is watching or listening right now, checkmate, boom, peace out, feel free to use that as a tag. Uh, but yeah, again, I'll, I'll, I'll take a note from your book and not describe the song. I will just say, if you were watching the band play this live, this is the part of the show where the lights would dim. There'd be a strobe light, maybe a set or costume change, if that's the type of show it is. And then fog would erupt from the stage and start sinking down into the audience. Um, and then I'll, <laughs> I'll just say the phrase, Metal Pink Floyd. Um, if you know what I mean, then great. If you don't, then you should probably go get this music um, and yeah. understand it. Yeah. It's a yeah. Great way to, great way to close out the album. Um, again, they're adding more elements to what they were already doing so well. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Great, great suggestion for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, and then next up blunt from DeKalb. Yeah. And blunt I have um, been listening to Blunt for a while. Um, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to include them, you know, on the show because, you know, they're from DeKalb and that's my stomping grounds. The, the music is really heavy, sludgy, doom. It has harsher vocals, but it's not, the vocals aren't harsh throughout. There's some variation gets heavier and heavier with each song and the last song is so heavy it, it to me it almost seems like it gets into the black metal territory although i admit i don't really know very much about black metal so i don't even know if that's what it is but it's very very heavy 
I really like the variety of styles and the song themes about drugs, love, and death. I definitely, definitely need to try to see these guys live. I have to make that a priority. The album is four songs, and it sounds amazing. It seems like they've really made a lot of strides from their last album to this album, and they've really developed their sound. The album art's really interesting, too. It's, it's, um, it reminds me of Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Dust. There's a, a man smoking, and it looks like he has a drink in his hand, and he's like slowly bending forward. And it looks like he's just going back into the earth. And I, I just thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, I had first heard of Blunt through you a couple of years ago uh, when you were a guest on A Fistful of Faceful. And Blunt was one of the bands. We did a whole Chicago or Illinois, you know, uh, the state of Illinois um, metal scene. And I remember Blunt. That's how I remembered they were from DeKalb. Um, the album we listened to was called Closure, uh, which it, it, again, I don't, I'm not, I don't remember if you brought it up this time or a previous time, but, uh, Sludge Doom was sort of the, the description that I thought really worked well for this sound. Um, the tone they're able to get is, it reminded me of, uh, William Miller from Almost Famous. Uh, the film when he runs into the band Stillwater and he tells the guitarist that his sound is incendiary. That's what I was thinking about, especially on the song Shrooms. I was like, wow, this tone is incendiary. Um, so if you're a musician out there and you're looking for uh, a sound, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a uh, Marvin Berry right now in back to the future talking to his cousin, Chuck, um, you know that new sound you're looking for? We'll listen to this. I want to be like, you're looking for tone? We'll listen to shrooms. Um, and yeah, it's, I liked it. It was a slower pace, as you and I usually like. Um, but I also enjoyed the song Closure, I felt was reminiscent of Motorhead. It was sort of like, not quite thrash, but it was like a precursor to thrash with a bit of a quicker tempo, but it fit really well. So high marks for Blunt. Definitely pick up closure, check out their whole repertoire, and uh, yeah, well done. And then last but not least, we have Crow Ballard, and the album is Grass Driveway. Yeah, and the, this album was released on October 2nd. Crow Ballard is a very prolific artist, has released a ton of stuff, and is very active on social media, very supportive of other artists, and has been supportive of us, which I really, really appreciate. I think this is a one-person operation. On his Instagram page, you can see all the visual art and video that he does, which is really, really creative. I don't really know how to classify the music. I, um, I was just going to say maybe a concept album, but I don't really think that's what it is. That's just what I could think of. <laughs> I heard bass, drums, guitar, piano, xylophone, synths. Um, really fun album to listen to. A bit experimental. Definitely rock. You'll hear something different in every song. Um, it seems like from listening that he has a lot of fun putting these songs together. And I thought that really came through in the music. Yeah, I would say a uh, crow bat first, let me echo Heather's sentiments. Crow Ballard has been extremely supportive of us, but, uh, he's also really active in the scene and very supportive of a ton of people. Um, so it's really wonderful to see that as for the music, uh, I would also agree with Heather. It is, there's not really an umbrella term that you can use to describe it. I would say that it's a really innovative, a combination of some really cool things. There was some garage rock in there, throwback to like the seventies analog stoner sound, uh, along with uh, some Tom Waits type stuff. Um, I remember being struck by the song full of bad ideas uh, that it was just really innovative and creative. So 
definitely give a listen to Crow Ballard, pick up Grass Driveway, check out the rest of the uh, the albums, uh, as the Sam with Blunt from DeKalb. Um, I will never not include where they're from. And, uh, and then, of course, Merlin. So be sure to check. Merlin has a ton of albums, too. So yeah, feel free to do a deep dive. Yeah. And uh, that's going to do it for today. Episode number 49. We'll, of course, be back next week with uh, Magic number 50. But uh, as always, Heather, it's been a pleasure. And thank, uh, thank you out there for watching slash listening. And don't forget to listen to these bands. Yes.